morning, everybody. Uh, Steve Isaacs from Zeiss. I mean, you guys are most, a lot of you are from local authority, so you should know how you specify or how you find that you need high friction surfacing. Then there's a whole life costing and value assessments that you're required to take into consideration now through, uh, through well-managed highways, replacing well-maintained highways in about three months' time, and you're likely to be audited, or some people will be audited on whether they comply with that document. So I'm here today to sort of say, and just, just remind you, really, as a local authority, how do you decide, using the, the rules at the moment, the asset management requirements, that, uh, that you actually might want high friction surfacing. So, managing the road surf skid resistance is a legal requirement placed on you as local authority uh, uh, staff and, and officers. Um, it's in the design manual for road and bridges. I'm sure it will be in the update as well. Uh, and it's, uh, it's referenced through and comes to HD 2815. 28 has always been around, 15 says it was introduced in 2015, I think it was 2004 before that, 18, 2804. So since 2015, you've meant to be looking at and should certainly be now complying with HD 2815. Probably 50% of authorities across the country, and we work across the whole of England, uh, don't comply. How many people have got a, a skid policy for their authority that, uh, that, that, uh, that has been addressed since 2015? It's been updated since 2015, yeah. Which authority are you? Cornwall. Cornwall. Yeah, with, with, with Andy, Andy Stevens down there, whatever, I'm sure, yeah, he, he's aware of it and that very much asset management has been uh, his bag for some time. Uh, and certainly Devon has been uh, probably at the forefront and has had policies on anti-skid. Uh, I think it leads the country with its, uh, its policies on anti-skid in Devon and what they've done here. So, so very, very locally, there's uh, some great examples, but the country as a whole fails to meet. And I've been unfortunate to, enough over my uh, time with local authorities to be the person that's standing uh, and explaining to a judge why a road was, uh, whatever skid resistance it was, and trying, using pendulums back in those days when I was doing that, it was before the HD came along, and saying when there's been a fatality and trying to mitigate the, the authorities' uh, position. So it's very serious stuff, is, is managing the skid resistance of your, of your road surface. So now we have to do it in line with, uh, with, with, with well-managed highways, which leans heavily on risk assessing and asset management. What is asset management? So asset managers have to know what they've got, first of all. You can't manage an asset if you don't know what that asset is. Um, not as simple as it sounds, there's a lot of authorities don't actually know exactly what network they own. Uh, they also need to know, or uh, put it into a hierarchy to say what level of transport is using it and how they're going to maintain uh, that, that, that each, each part or each section of that road. Um, so once you've actually got your, what we're going to manage, what your asset is, and you've found out what that is, then you need to find out what condition it's in. Um, you need to here scrim test the grip or some authority. I think Devon's got a grip tester and uh, and, and uses the grip tester locally. But the scrim is is is, is more, more more common throughout the country. And I think there's somebody here from WDM who will probably go into a lot more detail on, on what scrims do. But that's how you assess the condition of your network. So you've got your network, you've got your condition, and uh, that's. Uh, just a close-up of the wheel that skids along the road on a scrim uh, machine. And also, in, in your asset, you need to know gradients, bends, accidents. You need to know if it's actually a, a risky, risky area, if there is uh, accidents occurring, and all that data is available on the Stats19 DFT website, so it's not a secret. You don't have to find somebody in the authority who might have uh, some accident data that you've got to go and persuade them to give you. You can actually go onto the website and anybody can do it, find out what accidents has been where. So you've got your Stats19. You need your gradients, your bends to set the level as to what skid resistance you're going to need. And um, the little diagram there is uh, you need to monitor the, the, the line is, is, is where the bits that we said uh, didn't reach the standard that it was needed to for, um, for, for, for scrim. And it highlighted that there was two accidents. You need to go into those accidents and have a look to see if they were wet skid 
and actually relevant to, to what we're talking about today. And you need to see if they were or they weren't on the location that we're talking about, because the accuracy of where accidents are plotted at the moment is poor. So you might go into there and actually find that those two accidents were on your skid site, or you might find that they weren't, and you can disregard them. So you've got to do quite a bit of work while you're actually assessing what condition your, your, your road network is. And then you have to decide what, uh, what condition you'll accept. Every three years, you have to look at your IL levels. You must check your investigatory levels for your road network on a three yearly basis and decide if they are correct. Um, most authorities cannot afford to comply fully with the specification for highway works and, uh, and HD 2815 in its, in, its, in its entirety. So majority authorities write their own uh, skid policy and skid procedure like this. This is one we did for uh, Liverpool Key Route Network. So if anybody hasn't got an up-to-date policy and procedure, you have no excuse because you don't have to pay for it. You can probably go onto the RSTA website and you can pull one off and with a very minimum effort, you can have one that complies that you could put to your councillors, you can make your decisions and you can get a policy. Alternatively, you can employ us to come along and help you. But you must have that policy in place to say why you're setting investigatory levels where you are setting them if they're any different to HD 2815. So, there's no nationally defined recommendations for scrim coverage. Um, I think pretty much every, every authority does their A-class roads. Most authorities do their B. Some do C's. Uh, the, you'd need to write down in your skid policy what you're going to do. If you don't, then HD28 says all classified network. So somebody could pull you up for not doing C's. They could say, why haven't you scrimmed it? And if you just say, oh, we can't afford it, or we don't do C's, if you haven't written that down in your policy, you're in the wrong. Okay, so, so, so you need to, that's why we need a policy. It's a typical example of why you need your policy, so that when you decide you're not going to do all your C network, which most people don't, or on your hierarchy going forward, if you have 12 different hierarchies, if you say we're going to go down to number seven, then you need to write that in your policy and say, that's where we cut off, and why. One thing about the runs, the, the, skid, the, the, the scrim, um, it's only seasonal that you can do it, and, and that's the reason why. That's a really old, I mean, it says the laboratory report 738. I think uh, TRL laboratory reports now are like 3,000 and so on. So this is years and years old. But it does show you the difference there. If you look at the numbers, uh, 0.45 there on the number two, up to 0.6 um, sideways force coefficient. As Howard said, that isn't PSV, that's sideways force coefficient measured from a scrim. Massive variations throughout the year, so, so you can only do it, only do your scrim. Um, I think it's, uh, it, it, it's between May and September. Um, the other factors which also affect skid resistance, ambient temperature, test speed. A lot, a lot of people report that their failure on scrim at a certain percentage and don't actually take the, da the data into account. And if you look, and there's some places where it's going too slow, and that data wouldn't necessarily be correct, and that should, doesn't necessarily mean the road fails, but you need to check it. So, so it's test speed. Don't just take the data that comes as, 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 as car blanche. You need to, need to have a look at it and work with your supplier. Weather conditions, traffic flow. WDM, we're having it here today. PS, PTS to also do it. Um, and as I said, there's a number of authorities who do uh, grip testing. Um, I'm not sure actually if the grip tester is currently calibrated with the scrim. The scrim always go down to TRL on an annual basis and are, and are calibrated. Once upon a time, the grip testers used to follow them round the day after, but I don't think that's been done for many years now, so I don't think that the correlations are kept up to date. Um, so your skid resistance policy, aligned with national guidelines, but not actually national guidelines, revised in 2015. When you get your scrim data and you've got your investigative levels which you've set and you've checked every three years, um, you get your UK PMS processing of scrim is simple, sideways force coefficient equals uh, uh, 
the figure that you're sending through uh, and should be investigated. Then authorities should review and investigate three years. A site sat or below investigated and reviewed most three year crash data. Pull all this together. This is all stage one desktop study done in the office when you've got your scrim results. You compare your, your accident sites after review and doing that if it's concerned, you must visit that site. Um, typically in an authority, well, and I was England area, which isn't necessarily got anywhere near the network that you guys have. There were area seven, over a thousand sites needed to be visited last year because they failed on scrim and accidents and, 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 and uh, significantly enough to do that. Um, East Sussex we did, and I think there, there was uh, 470 sites in East Sussex needed to be visited after they'd done the desk study. So there's about 2,000 sites that will come up as failure easily in a typical authority, as in they don't meet the scrim requirements. But then uh, when you've done the accident data and you've looked at your IL levels, there's still about 500 that need to visit. They must be visited. That's the requirement in HD 2815 or your SCID policy. You will visit them. Once you've required a detailed investigation, um, we get a, a list of sites that, that need to be visited and, uh, and, and a rag map. That's typically of a, of a rag map that you've got and you'll have of, you know, reds need to be visited, they fail on, on accidents, they fail on, 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 on scrim, and, and you go out and visit the sites. You must ask really straightforward questions. Um, typically, you, you can't just send, go out and investigate it and say, I'm going to use my experience, because that's lethal when you get in front of a judge. You need a set of 25, 30, 45 questions. We use 40 questions norm, typically, and you ask typically yes no answers is there overhanging trees is the site flushed up is there you know there's lining in good condition things that you can write yes no answers on because when you get pulled up and there's been an accident and, and, you're, and you're actually having to justify this then you need to be straightforward what what why did you make the decisions you made you can't just have somebody going out and, uh, and giving it in their opinion and that would be typically site yes we need to do something about this site output from a detailed survey and then you've got the choice you don't instantly say right i've got a site that fails i must use high friction servicing because this is for your whole network it isn't just for your dangerous site so although that's a junction for your whole network you find out so you've got a choice of what you're going to do now it doesn't have to cost you money you might want to monitor and resurvey put up slippery road signs that's a good one because a lot of people put slippery road signs up but they don't have a policy how they're going to take them down again so there's an awful lot of slippery road signs around the country that are meaningless. Um, surface dress, retexture, high friction surfacing or resurface it uh, entirely and that's the decisions you've got to sit there and make. High friction surfacing should probably be the solution if uh, high risk site and especially if there's high friction surfacing there already. Removing it is a real difficult thing. The public know it's there, the public see it. If you remove it, you've got to have a pretty good reason in your policy why you're removing it and be able to justify why you're doing that. So, so existing sites. Um, and then there's all those reasons that yeah, you decide, you know, there's no point in putting a 12 year life product on a, a road surface. It's only got four or five years left in it. Um, Hard pass is good, it's essential, it's needed, or, or, or equivalent now, as PTS is at equivalence. Um, yes, and then it's whole life costing really, isn't it, with asset management? Um, you know, cost over life, meters squared. Ideally, I know some haven't got the funds, we're going to go to a cheaper solution, but that inevitably means you get not the life you wanted and you get complaints. So, I mean, asset management principles would suggest whole life costing comes into it. You work out what you can afford, best solution, and go forward. And that's really all I wanted to say. Um, thank you very much. I, 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 I uh, just here to re reiterate what local authority people should be doing. That's really what, what, what's the decision process for, for choosing how you're going to manage the roads. If you're not, then you need to get hold of HD 2815 and fully understand it. Thank you.